Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hit or Die podcast with your host Jake Saldotti and Chad Rothford. And we have a special guest today, James Bell. James, thanks for joining the show. Of course, thanks uh, for having me. Of course. Yeah. Stud, stud baseball player. We'll get into him a little later and his great story and journey. You know what today is? Um, today is... It's, it's Happy Joy. National Words with Friends Day. Like the game words with friends or just we say nice words to each other? You know, I don't know. Now, now, got to get down to that. Now, I got to go <laughs> research more details. Because Words with Friends was a big game back in when it first came out. Remember that? No. You never yeah. played Words with Friends? Did you play? Oh, uh, you're too young. <laughs> I was going to say. Where it's like uh, Words with Friends, where you like do a word thing. It was almost like Scrabble, but against each other on the phone. Oh, yeah. No, I, didn't. I, 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 now I know what you're talking about. I never played it, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well. I play Ultimate Golf app. Yeah, you sent me that. I sent it I to you. It's legit. I haven't done it's it. It's legit. If you like the golf game, it's a good good app. And uh, YouTube Challenge is still in effect. It's in effect. We're over 300 subscribers. <laughs> Just <laughs> mowing them down. We're real close to 1,000 where we wanted to be. So <laughs> keep, up, it, yeah. keep up the subscribers. Uh, oh, God. It's there. You don't even have to watch. Just hit the button. And we're going to start. So the second half of the MLB season is underway. And it's off to a rough start. Uh, no laughing matter. There was uh, shots fired outside of D.C. Uh, Nationals Park on Saturday. It ended up being uh, a shootout between two vehicles. Um, but they suspended the game. They carried on yesterday. I know there's maybe opinions on it. We don't have to talk about those opinions. But, I mean, I could imagine, seeing people's reactions, I would probably have acted the same. Yeah. Just a, I mean, just a terrible deal overall kind of going on, you know, just to have that happen, either whether it be inside or outside a stadium, because then, you know, the the instant kind of weather, yeah, whatever happens, exactly. you know, the panic. Uh, your the, mind runs to the worst. The worst, yeah. yeah. So, I think. Just any situation like that just isn't good. Um, never fun, but, I mean, I'm glad. I don't think there was. Uh, they said there was three people shot within the altercation. Uh, one they reported should survive their wounds, and the other two I don't know. Yeah. So Yeah, and I mean, and the players did exactly what any of us would have done. You know, we would have went and grabbed our family out of the stands right away and brought them in the dugout. And, you know, luckily fans were like, hey, I'm just going to follow them. You know, so well, I remember I saw some of the video and it was like some of the, the comment they didn't know what was going on, they didn't hear the shots, yeah, so they didn't know how to react. They just noticed people panicking or, or heading for the exits, or yeah, not only deal. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, no fans in the stadium were hurt, and obviously, no players. They uh, resumed the game Sunday, San Diego went on to win, and then you had uh, a Yankee game, a Yankee fan threw a ball at Alex Verdugo. Did it hit him? I believe it did. Did it hurt? I'm sure it did. Did it hurt him? Well, his back was to it. Oh, no. He's been hit by 100-mile-an-hour yeah, no. balls, dude. So Stop wait a second. Stop fucking whining. I'm surprised this happened hasn't happened before in a Yankee-Red Sox game. And I guarantee you it probably has. And nobody, nobody made a big deal about it. And it's just, well, yeah, I'd be interested to see some of the stuff that went on back in the day. You know, fans throwing stuff at people, players, you know, right, left. Center, wherever it may be. Especially old Yankee Stadium. Oh, you so know, Donald told us how close it was. If either one of you had a ball thrown at you, you wouldn't have reacted the same way? No. You wouldn't what are you gonna? What, what am I going to do? Go I, fight yeah. him in the stands? I'd have been pissed. Pull a bow I mean, of course I'm going to be pissed. I'm honestly, I would have grabbed the ball and maybe chucked it back at him. That's probably the That's worst it. I would have done. What am I going to do? Yeah, but I mean. Still get there and be like, oh, Fans whoa, should not whoa, be whoa, whoa, throwing whoa. stuff no. at and players. They, and, I'm not, and I'm not justifying that. But I'm just saying, we're making it a bigger deal than it is. We're banning the dude forever. From all ballparks. Forever. So, my question is, excessive? Excessive. Excessive? Excessive. Okay. Okay. I'm just... Why don't you give him a fine or community service? Make him pay some money to something. But to ban him? Come on. That's stupid. For throwing a baseball? I mean, the Chicago Cubs, after every home run, throw a baseball. You don't think it accidentally might have hit somebody? Didn't John Carlos Stan get hit by his own home run ball? Round the second round. base? Yeah, he did. <laughs> ban that guy. It's not like he was trying to hit. I mean, come on. It's stupid. That he wasn't trying to Did the to. dude throw a fucking 95 mile an hour fastball to Verdugo's back from the We stands? don't know. I don't no. have, I don't have seen I wish I could it. see it. He probably threw like a little pussy. You know? And it <laughs> Get him on the rap soda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I mean, you shouldn't be throwing stuff. No, and no. I agree with you. 
But the reaction was um, over the top. Over the top. Also excessive is what you're saying. Yeah. Never know what you're gonna get out of fans. No. Never. But you had a, you act like Verdu hasn't been called everything under the sun by by a Yankee fan. You know what I mean? When now one throws a ball at you, which he shouldn't have, and it hits you, but it probably didn't hurt, and you're gonna go crazy. Well, you're assuming it didn't hurt. I'm. I think the fact if it that hurt, it happened. The, if it hurt, we have another issue. <laughs> the <laughs> fact that it happened, though, <laughs> it shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have happened, but it did. But what are we gonna do? Just grab the ball and act like it didn't even hurt you. That would make the fan even more pissed off. It's, but now you just got what he wanted. He got you riled up. That's what they want. Rattled. When you go, yeah. When you go play, rent free. And I know I didn't. Yeah, rent, rent, rent free. free. Rent free. Hey, when you go play at the, he knows Power Five. You go play at these big schools. All they look at your Facebook, your Twitter. Oh. They will make fun of you no matter what. What are you gonna do? Go cry or yell at fans and stuff? No, you wear it because that's part of the game. No. He shouldn't have thrown a ball at him. I get it. Just like, who cares? Grab it, pick it up, throw it away. Move on. Move on. But now everybody wants to make a big deal about everything. It's a look at me generational crap. You know, look at me. I'm going to make a big deal about this. I don't know. That's my take. So next year when you're coaching third base or first. I want somebody to throw a ball at me. I'll grab it and take a bite out of it. Yeah. I'm going to pay somebody to throw a ball. It can't but I won't be, be coaching cause... third, so. Well. I'll figure it out. I'll figure but it out. But I mean, I've I was called cheeseburger by twelve thousand fans in Arkansas. Like, come on, bro. Try going up and hitting in front of twelve thousand when everybody's yelling cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Come on, bro. We still won. Yeah, I mean, like we were playing in Texas Tech my freshman year, and they're, they're bad, awful. I went they? to my brother's in Mizzou. The, I went there. Did you get the ball for chance? Uh, yeah, no, no doubt. Um, my buddy made a. He's pulling up on a ball, throw a guy out at home. I think the runner's on second. Pulled up, going to do a little crow hop, and just uh, tripped and literally fell on his ass. And they didn't like the Vinny. Oh and, yes. No, nah, so uh, they're big on the my buddy, when you strike yeah. out. They're big on the right, left. Oh, huge! Right, Everything. Left. I mean, yeah. they they eat you alive, like you said. Girlfriends, freaking nothing. Dig deep in, the, in the social on. media. Everything's crazy. I mean, that's what those fans live for. I mean, how about Starkville? I mean. They, that new stadium, that place is legit. I mean, that's a fans, yeah, super fans yeah. dream right there. 100%. <laughs> that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's okay. Okay. Should he have thrown the ball? No. no. Is it a big deal? No. Now, if he hurt him, like hit him in the head, he had a concussion, had to go to the hospital, that's something else. But what's the, what's the I mean, why are you throwing a ball then? Because all? he's a drunk fan that's a Yankee fan and they're playing the Red Sox. And that, you know, and they were playing that. Seventh inning stretch song. What is it? <laughs> the dude in a little head dance. Yeah. Little head. <laughs> they played the know. Red Sox games. I don't know. Come on, dude. The one from Fever Pitch. I don't. <sighs> I can't think of it right now. Damn it. Sweet Caroline. Yeah, 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 Sweet I Caroline. Was say, well, Sweet I thought Caroline? that was after the game. No, they play that the little, seventh inning stretch seventh inning, yeah. for the Red Sox games. But oh. it was in Yankee Stadium. I was just saying he just was mad. The Red Sox. Is that what you do when you hear Car- Sweet Caroline? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sweet little head. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, we also had a, the Arenado play on the foul ball down the third baseline with the Pirates and the Mets. Met uh, pitcher Tywan Walker threw a pitch. Oh, yeah. I think it was Stallings was the hitter. Yeah. yeah. And can you see that? Yeah. It was fair. Did he? But did he like knock yeah, he it or he grab it? Yeah. it? No, no, he threw it to the dugout. It bounced off the front of the dugout because now, look, he's running over to get it. And three runs scored. And Stalins ended up on second. It was fair, though. Like what oh, you're yeah. saying, it was leaned over. I even thought it was right. touching so, And they still. show the, the side clip But then Rojas it. goes ballistic, which I get. But, like. So, right here, yeah. watch. This This ball may not be on the line, but the, sh- the sphere of it is over. That oh, looks fair. That, yeah. that looks fair. You can't even see half the ball. But it doesn't have to be on the line. No, it doesn't. It has to be just hanging over it. Who would have thought we'd seen this play happen twice, twice in one season? It's nuts. Now, they're saying this is the dumbest play of the season. I think the the kid from Pittsburgh, the first baseman running by us back to home is worse. Yeah, that's the dumbest for sure. But look, the catcher's not arguing. Uh, I mean, now he Well, now he's saying a little bit. Now, but, 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 he but, if, but he would have said something when it first happened. He's mad because three runs came across. Yeah, well, yeah. If If... if uh, if it was foul, he would have said something right away when Taiwan did it, and the, the umpire didn't say foul ball. 
you know being a catcher yeah, no, you would have said something right away it, it's happened where mm -hmm. we are you know what i mean so him not saying anything right away it actually makes it a right call because if it's he had the same line if he thought it was really foul he would have said something right away or made a big like like oh like a, a gesture you know and I think I think it was fair, but then it just was the, fair. The it was whole, the right call. Yeah, it was the right call. But the whole situation of three runs scoring, your pitchers just stand there, the ball's off by the dugout. It's just Circus. it's a clusterfuck. Yeah, you know, make the play and then argue. <clears throat> yeah, finish the play and then argue. Yeah. See now as a catcher, now you know to tell all your pitchers like, let's make sure this thing's you can't see the you know like you see the line all the way. Mm -hmm. There's there's a gap, and that's there. almost a situation where Taiwan probably should have just even and we called the it happened to us where. We went and got it before. Let's just let it go. Yeah. Let's let it see fair foul because he's safe no matter what. Right. We're not going to get the ball and throw him out. Mm -mm. So let's just let it go. See what and I get, I get you think it's foul and you do it, but he's running to third baseline. So do you really know that it's foul you're running? He wasn't stopped, grabbed it, and then went like that. He was running and on the run, scooped, scooped. it. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. It's just a gnarly situation that. And I get Rojas is the manager. He's got to stick up for his guys, and you know. But I think it was a right call. Rare play. I mean, but it's happened, like you said. Twice but three runs year. shouldn't have scored. No. But again, it's uh, it's Major League Baseball. Today. Catchers now can know the rule. Pitchers need to know the rule. Everyone. There was another crazy double play. <laughs> the one Cal, uh, Cole Calhoun hit to first base. Did you see that one? Mm -mm. Hit it down the first baseline. Uh, Rizzo grabbed it, threw the ball home, straight over Cole's head. He dropped to the ground. The catcher picked it for the force out, and Cole didn't get back up and run to first in time. They threw him out at first base. Wow, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, that's an interesting one, too. Yeah, I just it's interesting that this happens twice. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's good to know the rules. I think this one, you know, again, for it being rare and happening like it's had and it's close to the line as it's been. I mean, that was borderline. Looked like it was touching. Yeah, it was. It was pretty close. Half the ball. Like, like the one, good. the one Arenado did. It you can tell it wasn't touching. Yeah. Right, but you also overhead can yes. tell it was. But not. that's what I'm saying. That one overhead, it was you can see it was over. over the line. This one looks like it's still touching like the even, line. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. On. It definitely not the dumbest play of the year. I still no. think that running by as the first catching home, the ball a bizarre. foot off the bag, <laughs> while he and with then, two outs. Yeah. And then running him back, and that guy from second scoring is the dumbest player. You know that guy's in the KBO right now? <laughs> the first baseman? First baseman's in well, the that's what happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lesson learned. He's probably getting paid more money. Probably. <laughs> probably. Uh, and then uh, the transfer portal stuff's going on, and I want to... How do you feel about players, m mainly players like youth, youth players, high school kids, being ranked... I hate it. I hate it because now you have players and parents only caring about a rank rather than go to the showcase and give it your best. And that's good enough. That's good enough. Let the let the people behind the scenes rank you if they want. But we don't need to put rankings out. What are the odds that those people that make the rankings haven't seen a kid that can't afford to go to their camp? The odds are good. High, right? Very. Yeah. So what do you oh, he feel would know. about? That's why I wanted to ask. Yeah. Well, because you had. I he was think, ranked. I you think, were ranked yeah, on multiple, I, multiple. Sites. And that's like you said, I just went to get my name out there. You know what I mean? And I think that's what it should be about. You do the showcase, you play, you, you know, you give it your all. And then that's it. You don't you don't even subscribe to these, you know, ranking. You know, they almost make you go in and buy another or subscribe to see the rankings. Right. Like you don't even mess around with that. Like, who cares? Just go in. Play, and then if you get a call or you get an email from a coach, then, hey, you know, something worked there. That that benefited you. You know, I don't think the rankings now or anything, they're just they're just a mind fuck, really. I mean, seriously, for younger kids, too. I mean, they're ranking like 13, 14-year-olds. I mean, what? I didn't even really <laughs> think, you know, I, I didn't even know if I wanted to play college baseball at 13 or 14 or, you know, let, well, yeah, I wanted to keep playing baseball, but it's like, to be ranked number one in the in the country or your state at the age of fourteen of is what, obscene. Right? Yeah, yeah. Of what? what? Of what are what? you number one of? Number one here? Yeah. How? Well, and you uh, you say that, and you've had time to mature and be in college for three years. Mm -hmm. But what was that like in high school, though? Being ranked, how important was it? And I mean, you can honestly be honest, have a different opinion, or you know, because yeah, some you, guys, no, some guys mature, are like, I want to be ranked. I want knowing what you know now. Factor, 
did it like feel like oh yes like did you get a little bit more puff chest like i'm i'm james bell and it's okay to be that way everybody's a certain way if anything i was just i was just happy and content that i was able to go to those places do you know well and then you know to get those invites back to stuff like that you know and i tried you know my best and obviously the rankings come if you if you play well and whatnot and I, I really truly tried my best, and that's not even because I I already did kind of see the whole system, the ranking system yeah. as just kind of a, you know, just a way to for them for them to, to make money, make money, and try to you know label kids as projectable or whatever it may be. But I mean, in the long run, I think it's a, a tool that they use for themselves, but they don't realize that it kind of has an effect on parents, players, and coaches for sure. I mean. I think it's a downward spiral here and that we need to get away from in the recruiting stage of things. I mean, you just go go and play in front of coaches or you contact coaches, they come watch you play, and then that should, you know, the result should be hopefully you getting a spot at that school or you getting opportunity elsewhere. I mean, that's what it's about. It's not about I'm number <laughs> one in the state. Well, and what if you go to a showcase where you have, say you have the top 100 ranked kids, right? You go to a showcase that has 90 through 100, and you're ranked number one out of those. So now they're like, oh, he was ranked number one out of this showcase. But he was ranked number one out of the 90 through 100, right? So it could almost be misleading the rankings, depending on what showcase you're at. Or That's why it's just, why are we even ranking kids? And they're making money, and all these rankings, they don't even really mean much. And, and I feel like, you know... There's nothing wrong with just going and doing your best. And I feel like these these kids and parents are putting more pressure than they even have to on themselves to be like, I need to be ranked this high. I need this scholarship. I need to be committed here. I need to do all this stuff. And it, again, it comes back to that look at me type thing. You know, the, every, they want everybody to see them and look what I'm doing, how good I am. And I'm ranked this. And well, I'll tell you what, draft, draft day didn't go the way the rankings had them on the draft Not day. Not even close. So, I mean, what is the what do the rankings even really mean? That's just a, a projection of the, what the draft might be. It's what some couple of guys think. Yes. That are of no importance. That don't go to your practices. That don't see, you know, they don't see the behind the scenes. They stuff. only see kids that come to their stuff. That pay to come to their stuff. And I think it ties into a lot of the college commitments and the, the race to commit because people see they're ranked and then they're like, oh, you know, if, if colleges aren't popping up or either they're not ranked and, you know, it just it puts a, cert, a huge amount of pressure on a kid. You know, you're talking about a 15, 14 year old kid. That's where they're starting. And it's like, why, why would a kid ever want to go into something like that? seems so kind of cruel in a way really i mean from an outsider's perspective when really it should just be about fun enjoying the game we all love you know and playing baseball and if good things happen they happen you know what i mean and i think that's where this line has now been so you can see it so clearly in my opinion and uh the the, the commitment race too is what i think like i said the rankings so tie important into that right and now. it's so important and everyone just needs to realize that they're on their own path and if 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 you know, and it's not not a race to commit. You're not in any rush to go find a, or in a big school. You know, you got to find the spot for you. And I think that's the thing that's so so overlooked now in the recruiting process and what kids want. Um, even maybe tying into what their parents want for them too, because um, the rankings can have just as much an effect on the kids as they do the parents. No, hundred percent. And I mean, the point of this is so. And then the transfer portal. Right. And again, there's certain circumstances where in college anyways, transferring is OK. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I understand it. I mean, I would have fought. I would have done like Riley Cooper is going to LSU. His head coach went to LSU. Yeah, I, I he under, just played for him. I understand that. And had a great season. If my coach at Oral Roberts, he was they were planning on he was possibly going to Notre Dame my senior year. I would have done it. I would have transferred. Heck I would have yeah. went there to follow my coach. I want to play for the guy that recruited me, that believes in me, and that kind of stuff. And then you have somebody else come in that might not believe in you or know yeah, you. you. You know where you stand with that. Exactly. Right? You get a new staff in, which is, you know, I'm sure at Oregon, yeah. you, mm -hmm. you were involved in. You don't know where you're going to fall into that shuffle. 100%. You don't know where you're going to fit into their expectations. Mm -hmm. Right. And you don't, now the fit may not be a fit. Yeah. So in college, I understand that completely. Even, you know, we talk about that grad transfer, mm -hmm. completely different. Right, I, I get that stuff, um, but Baseball America put out a, a tweet, a re 
or an article ranking the top transfers available in the portal. portal. And I just thought that was almost making it popular. Like you're promoting this. You're promoting transferring. Yeah. Yeah. You've, you've, you've put a number to kids leaving where they made a commitment to. And again, I don't know all the circumstances, but in some of those cases, it's just to leave. Yeah. No, I agree. And I'm, I'm against the transfer portal unless it's for – they have to put um, certain things on it for transferring, I think. You can't just get out and go transfer because you're not playing here. You know, that Coach kind of pissed thing. me off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it needs to be like a grad thing, which is what they did with football. You have that yes. extra year of eligibility. Yeah. Look, I didn't get drafted. I still want to go. I'm going to do uh, my master's at this school. You know, it's a great school. I'm going to go there, and I'm also going to play baseball. That's one thing. My coach left. I want to play for him, though. Mm -hmm. I can transfer. You know, stuff like that. I feel like there needs to be uh, a line that you have to, you know, abide by or the rules you have to be. um, Like, this is this reason for transferring is okay. Okay, you could transfer. This reason isn't. You got to stay where you are. You committed there. You stay there. I think there needs to be something like that put in place. Um, But like you said, they're making it a thing. So what kids are going to want to just go? How much is it for clicks, though? Let's be real. They just they don't know who's number well, like one. I, and I was gonna say it's like you already have the list, the transfer portal. You go and open it, and you see every single kid that's in it. I mean, that's all you need. You don't need to then rank that right. list because you can already see that list. I mean, then you're just okay. You're you're condensing the list, and you're taking however many you think are you know the top one hundred or whatever. It's like, well, and you can see everybody's video. I was just talking uh, with Coach Bates all the other day, and because I was asking him, he was talking about when they. Um, like the Saturday night guy. Like they just had the mm-hmm. guy from Santa Barbara or was it Bakersfield? I think the guy from Bakersfield is going to Fresno State. I believe he so. He transferred yeah, to Fresno yeah. State. So what he did when that guy was interested in coming to Fresno State, before they said yes, they went and watched his video. So every school in the country pays this same price to have all their games put in this video portal or hub. Yeah. And any coach can go to any game, any player, and watch their stuff. So he went straight to the games that he pitched – watched his stuff then he got out his cards that they had on him for when they played fresno state looked at all his stuff before they before they chose to have him come as a transfer so you don't think all those coaches are doing that stuff they're going to watch the players they want or interested in seeing their stats seeing their games they played they don't care about the ranking and not every other not every coach in every school is going to get the top 100 guys i mean it's like it's like finding the right fit again you know what i mean it's like not well those guys are leaving prominent schools as far as baseball is concerned looking for the Another next prominent, prominent school, school. Yeah. yeah exactly they're not just looking to go d2 you know what no. i mean i just think to rank that you found a way to market for baseball america to get people to click yeah because i clicked on that article to read it and you know that's the point i guess yeah and it's a pretty shitty move i'm I not so. I, I don't like that or like the D1 baseball, Kenny Rogers does a great job, but... Kendall. Or Kendall, oh, yeah. whatever. I don't even care, to be honest, because he you have to pay to go read it. Most most of the stuff, yeah. That just, like, stuff like that just makes me mad. Like We should start charging for this. subscription crap. Well, then we're going to go out of business. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're going to have two subscribers. <laughs> me and you? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just, um, yeah, yeah, it's just a shit show. And, you know, the portal is getting out of hand. People just aren't happy. There's no way there's over 2,000 kids that just aren't happy. Or that are, no, that, let me rephrase that. There's there's no way there's over 2,000 kids that are leaving because of a coach or for the right reasons, I guess. You know? Right. It's just like these kids here, they leave. There's not a way they're, all the transfers are leaving for the right reasons. For high school? Yeah. Of course not. You know? So, Be honest. Be honest. Tell. I'm leaving for school. Guess what? I don't want to go to Clovis North. Yeah. I want to go to Buchanan. Okay, then just say it and and wear it, yeah. and wear it. You know, I I was honest on here. I'll I'll send my kid to the best place I think he's. But I'm gonna do it when he's before he's in high school, because I'm gonna pick the school he's going to in in high school, and he's going there for four years, and he's gonna know the coaches. He's gonna play for the coaches. Now, if a coach leaves, and I don't like the new coach that comes in, that's different, right? I mean, I would to assume point, so. I would assume so, unless you know? he's a senior. I mean, if there's any consequences to sitting out, you just kind of. Yeah. But again, if by then you know what you are as a player. Yeah. 
Right. But and then we also talked. I about think if you start junior high somewhere, like you should stay. Th- that's when you do it. Because that's when the high school coaches come watch right. and see mm-hmm. you. I don't think you start high school and, and then jump ship. No. I think where I you start high school, you need to stay there. Yeah. It. Unless again, there's some small circumstance of, or not small, but a rare circumstance. Yeah. Of you got to go, then you got to go. Yeah. But you know, and then we're, we're talking about the commitment thing, and there was somebody the other day that committed to a school as a sophomore. Now he's better than he was as a sophomore, goes to a showcase, throws hard, probably has people telling him how good he is and he could be going to a different school. So then he decommits and opens his commitment back up. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Why commit as a sophomore then if you're not going to stick with that commitment? That's another reason why this commitment crap that you were talking about, it's just bull crap. Everybody wants to commit. I want to commit. I want to commit. Well, if you're not going to commit and be committed... Well, that's why it's then why are you committing because you can't sign anything till your senior year it's called committed for a reason yeah committed it it means something but now you're now you're better than you were as a sophomore and you had maybe some power five schools interested so you're going to open your commitments back up or whatever your recruiting process like to me that that's shitty on the parents as a parent i would be just i'm you're just you're terrible as as a parent that decision was terrible to allow your kid to decommit from a commitment that he had you sat down on us a family and said, this is where I want to be in college, and you committed to it, then you commit to it. Yeah, my question would because be... Because the same coaching staff is still there. That's what I'm saying. What by changed? Way, yeah, by the no. way. What changed? What, what about the... Nothing has changed, uh, well, except that I'm, the kid got better than he was. And Yeah, in my opinion, it's like even... It only gives you more of an opportunity to shine at that, that one place. You know what I mean? That's... It, it says it in and of, in and of itself. You know what I mean. You're, that's your place. Why why take that away and then go to a place that there's like four or five of you. You know. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, competition makes you better. I'm not against that. I'm obviously all for that. But I'm saying still, like we circle back to, still the fit for yourself. I mean, shoot, he could shine or not. You know. Well, look at what's going on. Let's say what you're saying is correct, right? I go to a showcase and somebody's somewhere else is talking to me. Knowing I'm committed to a place. That's kind of shady. As a player, I'm thinking, well, this guy knows where I'm going. And he's trying to get me to back out of that. Yeah, but, okay, I agree with you. But now I'm going to be like, look, what does a commitment really mean, though, nowadays? Nothing. Guys, until you, you sh- sign the paper, until nothing. you sign the paper, no, it nothing. means nothing. It's a hey, I'm going. It, it means nothing. I'm going. It there. means nothing. You're hoping that it means loyalty to the, the from the player. So should they? And the coach. So should at some point they step in and say, "Listen, you can't verbally commit until you sign the dotted line." I think so. I, like, let's where, stop this. Let's stop this craziness. Yeah. You commit when you actually sign the paper. Yeah. Do it have like they do in football, which I know they commit earlier, but do it like they do football. Have your hats out and be like, I'm committing to this school and I'm signing my paper. Do that. Stop committing when you're a or freshman. Or just on or signing day, those like, colleges know where you're going. Yeah. Maybe throw them a text in the morning. Because part of I, mean, I think it also. Because you're talking about over recruiting. Would that make over recruiting worse though? But I, I think it's tough to say because the money aspect in baseball and people shuffling out every year, it makes it tough not to go find younger, you know, or sign guys every single year know for a fact guys are coming in every single year and then i mean i'd love for guys to wait until their senior year and sign but i wonder how that would affect the recruiting as it is and how baseball's set out right now now if we had 80 or like football 80 full scholarships to just hand out like pieces of candy i think it probably could be different but i don't know that's something i just thought about you know because but a lot of those power five schools they're recruiting the top high school players in the, in the country knowing they might get drafted. True. So you're still possibly losing out Question. on that scholarship yes. anyways. Yes. You know, so I mean, I, maybe true. maybe your junior year you can commit. I, I, you know, I mean, I think there has to be, there has to, you can't, a 15-year-old, I mean, like we said this, there's you weren't the same your 15-year-old freshman year as you were your senior year. I mean, you know what I mean? It's just you're so different, you know, and, and we just saw that happen, you know, with somebody – that decommitted right now. He was so different now than he was two years ago. It happens. But then don't commit. Yeah, I guess it, ultimately it's just an opinion, right? You have an opinion oh, yeah. now because there's no rule against it. No. There's nobody stopping it that's saying you can't do that. So it ultimately is what it is. Um, I just didn't like the, the Baseball America side to that of let's, let's get people to 
come traffic our website with this story. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But uh, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's just somebody going to see something because all the coaches have all the information they need. They don't go to Baseball America and look at that. They go to the portal. <laughs> they go to the portal, look at the player, and then they go to their film, the hub thing and film. Text the player right away. Yeah. It's yeah. A wrap. They're not going to Baseball America and looking at that. Well, That's just for their own. Getting into your, your story of it, you know, you were – First team all track, sophomore, junior, senior, offensive player of the year, Cal High Sports first team guy. You know, you were ranked in the perfect game system and all that stuff. When did your so you end up at Oregon out of high school, out of Clovis North, and Coach Prieto? How was that for you? At, at what age did that all go down? Um, I'd say kind of the. Younger, around the sophomore year time, uh, especially since I played well my sophomore year in the track, uh, kind of got my name out there a little bit more. Um, I went and played for Rob Bruno in NorCal uh, up north, so I started traveling to Arizona and getting, you know, seen out there and stuff. So I th- think that's around the time my recruiting process really started. So pretty young, um, and, you know, like we bring up the rankings, that's where all that crap started in my opinion. But, you know, I just tried to go – each one of those things, like I took a track game almost, just go and just try your best and see what happens, man. I mean, I mean nothing rank. changes in your preparation. Well, the recruiting process should start then. That's fine. That Yeah. You know, it's the commitment side is the question. Exactly. Like the process can go on and on and on. But I mean, and I did commit. I think I committed October my junior year, which is pretty early. Um, it's a year before you signed. Yeah, it's much. Exa- it was almost exactly a year before I signed. Um and I, I was comfortable with my commitment. I felt like the process had gone on for about a year, year and a half almost. And I felt like I narrowed down, you know, I took some visits, narrowed down all my schools. And I said, you know what, I want to be there. I want to be in Eugene. So I was, you know, my early commit, I wasn't necessarily afraid of. Um, however, looking back on it, I totally could have, I think, been like, oh, um, you always want to go reach the big schools. And obviously that's every kid's dream. But then you kind of start thinking back and not making the wrong decision because I think everything happens for a reason. You're set in the place for a reason. But um, you definitely start thinking about different things that, like, I was, you know, going through this recruiting process again this last year or so at City, And it definitely made me think differently this time around um, going through the first process. And then, you know, this definitely time. more prepared for it. Yeah, I think just, you know, more, more mature on a baseball aspect and a, you know, mental aspect kind of just. I am with the process, kind of knowing how the way, you know, how colleges work and how we talk to coaches and how this whole recruiting process is set out in stone right now. Um, I've just felt more comfortable with it this time around. Um, but I was I was content with my Oregon decision kind of early on. You know, I was like, that's the place I want to be. Cool place. Pac-12 can't beat can't beat the competition. No, I'm a good player. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, I think just that whole transfer period is like I said, finding the right fit. And after I made a coaching change my right after freshman year. Um, but I loved the place and the people so much. I thought I'd stick around. And I mean, you can't beat um, the facilities and all that stuff there. I mean, it's not even people would joke, joke around like the gear and all that, you know, it's not, not so much that, but definitely, I mean, any, if you go to any, if any kid were to go to Oregon and see the facilities or what you lift in or any school like that in my opinion pac-12 has i mean i feel like they're pretty similar throughout the board because football you know paves the way for everything i think that um you know who what kid's going to turn away from that i mean you know what i mean and it's just got to be the right fit on all aspects and i think that that's where it slowly trickled off and i realized that i was maybe gonna have to make a move for those reasons you know yeah and you i mean new coaches come in they might like different guys bringing their own guys, you know, going to city. Um, you having a great 2020 season, then you know you were thinking you're I'm going to be here for a year and get out. Yeah, uh, and then COVID hit. Wait, what? Well, before the, the coming back part of it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because we kind of yeah talked, we talked. About okay. this is actually good. Sorry, I, well, I rushed into something. It's like you you play in the track right, and I, it's pretty it's very competitive. Mm-hmm. Like. Coming back, you kind of have to deal with keep, all the second guessers. Yeah, like you probably had people talking shit. Oh and yeah, like, I mean, he can't take you. It or he can't. Yeah, like yeah, there's a million. I think 
different things I heard about why I left or, oh, what happened to you at Oregon? And I was just like, dude, can can a kid just make a decision for himself, you know, just be like, maybe that's not the right place, you know what I mean? Um, I, I loved Oregon. It was a great experience, you know, playing for Coach Horton and uh, Coach Ullman and the rest of my stuff. Mitch Carricker was there and Jason Dietrich, some great baseball minds up there, and I had a blast. But like I said, you know, it's just – People are going to say a million things about you, and what really matters is what you know and what you stick to. Yeah, and like you said it before, you were comfortable with your commitment. You were also comfortable with that decision. Exactly. I was and I, I don't have to explain it to anybody other than my family's on board, I'm on board, and we'll just let the rest happen as it happens. Right. I mean, I think that's as simple as it should be. There should be no questions, really. I mean, unless I feel the need to go and, you know, tell everyone i mean i don't think it's like a oh you know it's just it, well you're not that guy either yeah no that's you right know, even your commitment to oregon it wasn't plastered everywhere yeah i mean but obviously <laughs> the, the big name gets plastered. but yeah no i i mean i didn't i don't yeah i'm i've kind of always been one of those kids i don't really like the you know, i got a red face when i was younger whether it be good or bad things <laughs> happen you know like so i mean i I'd never really made it out there to do that type of stuff but like like you said, that's a perfect way of putting it. Like it's just should be family, close friend. You know, you know your decision you're making. You're trusting that, and that's what you're gonna go for. It shouldn't be this whole big old deal. Even though I mean, it could be. Um, it's just it, it should just be a smooth little transition. If you're happy with it, you're happy with it. Yeah. No, I get that. And again, it, you you were talking about the decommitment earlier, and it's there's some some there's some truth to that also. Like. We don't know 100% why those decisions were made. We can assume why, and if those are assumptions are true, I think the, you're right to have that opinion. If there's things we don't know behind the scenes, then, you know, whatever, whatever's best for the kid ultimately. Yeah. You know, but this is, you went there, mm-hmm. right, and, and you had the change, which is, it's, that's it. That's, that's what you committed for. I mean, so when that's gone, you know, if people don't understand that part of it, I mean, I just, then there's nothing to say to them. Yeah. Those people you have, you don't need to say anything. Yeah, exactly. That's what I've come to the, that's my conclusion I've come to. Um, It's kind of. Was City the, like, was that, was there other. Well, he can't, he was there for a little bit of the fall. Yeah, so I stayed, I stayed, I hung around because I, you know, like I said, I like. Give it it a go. Give it a go. Let's see what the new coaches bring. Maybe I'll like them. And um, I was confident that I would. And it's not like I didn't at all. I loved the new staff that came in too, but. Like we said, just things don't – opportunity, kind of never know. you got to look out for yourself sometimes. And I just thought that, hey, maybe I should go back to City, uh, what, play well there, and, and see what my other opportunities are elsewhere. Um, but, yeah, I hung around for the fall, so it was a quick transition, like back uh, back home rolling into City. Um, how was that exit meeting? Like, how? I mean, you just pack up and, oh, coach, I'm, yeah, no. Monday I'm leaving and Tuesday I'm in Fresno. It was... It was, it was a, I mean, I remember it was like an hour and 15 minutes, uh, all the coaches. I mean, it was a, it was a tough exit meeting. I, I don't think we, you know, we both didn't really want to mutually part ways, but I think it was, we both realized that it was going to be best for me as a player where I was, confidence level and, and everything in, in, intertwined. I think that was going to be the best route. Um, but it was it was a great yeah, exit meetings are, are long and they're yeah um it, it was a great break off though Still, that's good yeah. that's good because that's not always the case it's not no and I, I hear stories all the time you know I didn't barely spoke to my head coach or you know right. like, like you're playing with all these different guys from different colleges and summer ball and summer ball circuits and you hear all types of stuff and guys leave in different places and totally different moods um and you know I fortunate to have you know a situation where easy break off you know and both both parties were were content you know and so city it ends up being where you come back to how was that like when you got back here <laughs> like oregon to fresno city not even, well i mean you could look at it that way i guess that's I'm, how i look at it because i <laughs> did you look at it that way no, I'm just saying because at Oregon, it's like, I want to go to the weight room. I want to go get the caf- the food. I want to go do this. <laughs> now you're like at Fresno City. And I, I'm not knocking Fresno City. I'm just saying well, you, you, have to, there. you have to do everything yourself. I got to go to my gym. I got to I gotta keep. It's not on a schedule. Like, you know, when you're yeah, at a D1 no. school, everything's on a schedule. 
Yeah, I think, though, that it would probably make, and you could answer this, that it would make where you want to get, like, even more important. Oh, yeah. Because it's solely on, I mean, it's on you it's now. I mean, you, honestly, yeah. you're in the you're in that team atmosphere. I get that. But, like, that part of it, the class, the the, the food, the, the weight room, the not going out when you're at home again, mm -hmm. like, it's on you to achieve that next well, level. Well, you were there. Why you came back. Yeah. You, know, you can't leave somewhere like an Oregon, come back to city, and then not follow through. And ultimately get where you're going now but yeah. you know was that a challenge oh well yeah i think the first kind of when i really it hit me when i was driving back from eugene you know a long car i had a lot to think about i was just like shoot not shoot in a bad way but this is happening i'm going to city this is gonna i was i was excited you know after talking to coach scott he's got a different way and firing people up so i mean it was just good to hear his voice and hear the excitement in his voice and i mean i, I was excited for a little bit of a change so um Came in, guns blazing, found out Roth was going to be a hitting guy. And then, obviously, the whole COVID situation made that weird. We didn't even know when we were going to have a practice. or So the transition gave me a lot of time to think a little bit. And there's a brief moment where um, I was just like, ooh, wow. I, I got to really plan out my day and get on a solid routine here because, you know, it's not like I got a 5 a.m. wake-up call mandatory to go do this and then that and then class right away different type of schedule i gotta drive 25 minutes to class you know what i mean so it was uh, it was interesting for sure and it took i think a little bit of an adjustment period to get on a routine and uh, at city because i'd grown up there hitting in the cages you know love love the facility and love spending time there but it was definitely i think interesting getting from the whole d1 you're dialed into and do 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 literally it's 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 pretty nuts uh, and then trying to find that same intensity but obviously it's going to be a different it's much more independent. Yeah, work. just much more, you know, it's like you and the guys driving in the field at Oregon all the time. It's like you live, sleep, you, you know, you breathe with these dudes. And then JUCO, especially in California, you know, because it's more scattered, not living situations aren't planned out in JUCO in California. So it's just like it's not that atmosphere. You're totally independent until, you know, you kind of get to the field and everyone's like, what's up? Um, so I, I think the – I think that's why – kind of the, the JUCO route is an interesting and, and one that I think is slept on because um, you kind of just have to figure it out for yourself. Um, and there's going to be people there to help along the way, but you kind of just it's so independent. You, you got to hold yourself accountable, and that's what it's about in the end I mean, if you want to get anywhere. Well, plus you were at a Power 5 school. You knew what it was like and what it took to get there. Now you're coming back to a junior college where – you're not playing with guys that have been there. They're trying to get there, but mm -hmm. you know what it takes to get there. So how was that? Did that actually give you more of a, man, I got to bump it up even more now to get back to where I came from? Yeah, it also, yeah, no doubt. And it also gave me a kind of a kick and said, hey, you know, you can really start, you know, showing what you got in the tank or what whatever it may be because, you know, it came down, like you said, it's, about getting back there. So if these Juco, Juco guys are hanging with me and no bash to Juco guys, it's, I loved my time at the Juco. Um, but, okay, I got to keep stepping up, stepping up, stepping up, and I think that helped a lot, especially the quick short season this past season. It's like wake up, you know, four games a week, just weird types of uh, – it was almost like a summer ball season. So uh, the quick and then, you know, kind of new game every day. You got to just get on get on the horse or it's going to fall off real quick um, type thing. Yeah. You had a good year too. All-American, first team catcher. Played one, two, three. Played four positions. All three alpha positions, catcher, and then DH as well. Um, and then we talked a lot, you know, because I've, you know, we I picked your brain a lot. We had a lot of conversations about – grinding, working hard, putting in the time. And, uh, you know, kind of you were talking about the fit and then this process. Yeah, we obviously want to go to Power 5 school, but we talked about this too, how great that would be. But the chances now of being a, a JUCO guy there for now you're a third-year sophomore because of COVID, mm -hmm. you know, just things didn't there. So now we had to sit back and be like, okay, realistically, where am I a good fit to go to college and, um, you know, kind of take us through that and our talks and, and making your way to, to Bakersfield. Yeah. Um, 
you know, when this process started, I had no idea what I wanted. I really didn't. I didn't know if I wanted to go back to a Power 5 school. If I had the opportunity, I didn't know what I'd be like, if I was going to take it or not. Because um, the, the process was kind of slow to start, even as the season this past spring went on. Uh, no bites, uh, if you will, across the board from some of the colleges we had hit up. And then it kind of slowly started to pick up and pick up. Um, so I think at the beginning I was actually a little bit discouraged um, and kind of confused, but then tried to stay level-headed and kind of said, you know, let's just let the season drag on. And um, I think slowly as that little quiet period went on, I started to realize I'm going to find, I got to find the right fit for myself. Not going to listen to, you know, outside factors or bling bling at certain places. You just got to stick to, I think, you know, like going through the process again. It was just, I kind of seen some things and I was just like, that's what I want. So I just, I thought that in the end, uh, the, the when I started talking with Bakersfield and kind of, you know, close to home, uh, still have somewhat of a support system nearby um, that I couldn't really turn that, that offer down. Uh, the opportunity there and the Big West is a great freaking conference. Um, I think it's just up there with the pack and all these other schools because um, you see what four or five out of the big west schools consistently in the top you know 40 or 25 really of baseball so it's it, i i think it's going to be fun um i'm excited to get up there down there <laughs> um but yeah the the decision in and of itself i think in the end wasn't was an easy one because i said this is where opportunity is and you know i got these coaches are really calling me and they seem to really want me to be the guy and you know that's what we kind of talked about or uh, yeah, you wanted to go somewhere. You don't have time to go somewhere and sit for a year. Or Yeah, or even you dabble know? with that. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I just need to go to where there's opportunity. And I think that's where it lined up. And whatever is there, it's, it's okay, that's who I got to outwork. Exactly. You know, um, exactly. I think you're right about the Big West. And uh, I, mean, I think it should be in the power of six. You know what I mean? It's just up there with the competition. I mean, you, you, Fullerton. Long Beach State. Long Beach UCI, State. Irvine. Cal Poly's always good. I mean, you, you got <laughs> You got these guys in regionals playing to go to Omaha every year. Other yeah. than I think Fullerton this year, the first time in God knows how long. So, yeah, it, it, it's going to be great for Bakersfield. It really is uh, playing in that conference. Did it? Did the? You know, you said you were discouraged a little bit early by some of the lack of maybe people called just mm -hmm. reaching out. Yeah. Do you think playing four games a week maybe helped that keep it off your mind a little bit? Totally. Because you had to wake up and play the next day. Just had to go wake up and figure out my routine and what I was going to do to hopefully just keep carrying on, you know, the the hits and letting them roll. Um, well, I know it's in the, maybe in the back of your mind. At times, you just don't have time to focus or dwell on that. I, and, you know, like we said, our, I always kind of like to say it's just like you're not going to get anywhere if you just dwell in the past. One of the best things I ever heard is when – I was visiting Michigan and the head coach there, Eric Backich, he, he just said, you got to be where your feet are. You know, where, you know, where, where are my feet right are there in this meeting, you know, with you, that's where, you know, I'm at. So um, I think that's one of the, the, the greatest things ever put out there. And you just got to be in the present and especially in baseball, short memory. I mean, gosh, and it just, I think that extends only into life. hundred percent. Well, I think too, after, you know, cause we had a lot of conversations in the rec recruiting process I think with how quick the recruiting process came in the last month and a half, you understand why it was so slow during the season because everybody's playing this COVID season. Everybody's busy. Coaches are, you know, going a mile a minute trying to get games in. There wasn't a lot of room for – plus there was no recruiting. The recruiting, you know, they can't go out and watch you play or whatnot. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it was just a tough time. But I think there, it ended up being there was enough time. You know, we got you out there. You were, mm. a lot of schools were very interested. Power five schools. Yeah. Um, I think the draft hurt that too, though, a little bit. Being in July, um, the draft. If it was in June, there would have been a lot more. You know, schools interested because um, those big time schools wait for the draft, wait for the all that kind of stuff. So, but I think that after talking with Bakersfield, the fit you talked about is is a good fit. Yeah. You're gonna do great things, and you know, being a catcher slash freaking whatever you'll be in the lineup <laughs> yeah. wherever they need you yeah that's so that's the plan you know just like you said go in there obviously there's going to be competition wherever i go but that's you know you just got to stick stick true to what you know go in there and uh 
we hope for the best, you know, give it your all and keep working. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't have been more content with that little fit I found. Pretty pretty pumped to put on the Roadrunner Uni. Not going to lie. And the teammates with you. Uh, Marcelo's so, going there as well. Actually, yeah, uh, Marcelo and my buddy who has From been. From Oregon, right? Yeah, he's been in Eugene the past three years. Uh, he's sending it down to bakersfield so that's that's another plus to it should be we room together too so it should be should be a blast kind of want to finish with one more question go for it with, with having you know you, you plays a lot some travel ball you you did the you know you get those ranking stuff you commit to oregon uh, come back to city and go through the process again to bakersfield with probably a different mindset or an idea of what fit means, right? It probably meant something different as a junior than it did now. What would you tell all these kids? out? Because I'm sure you run into kids all the time now that are sophomores, freshmen, that see what you were talking about. The, they get those blinders. They get the, the, the turfs and the weight rooms. And yeah. The, like, what would you say to those guys that are, I mean, that aren't living, breathing it, but won it. You know, they, they, they're not living and breathing what it takes to get there and, and have success in that environment, but they want that. Um, I think you really got to ask, you got to first, you know, ask some questions to some people who have been there, and then you got to ask yourself, is that really what I want to do? Because um, I think there's a lot that happens to, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it, Plan. It happens to a lot of guys. You're on the bus and you're over, you know, seventy or whatever it can be. I mean, that's soul sucking right there. I mean, so I think there's uh, there's a big wake up call for a lot of people when they do get to it, and you know they realize, oh my god, this is a lot. Um, I think people do need to realize it is a lot, but it still should be fun. I mean, you should still want to, I think, have that drive to get better because I think without that, then you know that that stuff's not fun. Um, because, you know, going to weight, lifting, running in the morning, and then doing it with all the guys and just going through that process together, that's not fun if you don't love it. So, um, I mean, You not. can only have so many turfs <laughs> that make you happy. <laughs> you can only wear two, right? two, yeah. one pair at a time. Yeah. Well, you can wear two, one different shoe. I guess you could. <laughs> Swag it up a bit. Um, no, I, I think that it's important to to know what you're getting into um, and, you know, do your homework a little bit on these routines. And I think, cause I think that's the biggest sh shocker to some people or when pe I talk to people kind of outside the baseball realm and they're like, Oh, you're doing this, doing that, doing that. Yeah. It's like an everyday deal. It's, and it's their job. It's, I, and I hate to use that word cause you know, it should be fun. Um, but it is a little bit of a job and you, you love your job. That's what you should strive for. But you know, it's, 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 it's no joke, and these kids need to realize that, you know, it, it, at, in the high school levels they work up, um, that it, it goes fast, too. And in the, in the blink of an eye, you know, you're, you're in it, and, and you got to just keep stepping on it and going and going and going, or else um, there's going to come that time where, like you said, kind of, or like I almost said, they, they realize it's, it's a lot. Um, Maybe they weren't ready. Yeah, for that. yeah, and I, I mean. So having said that, and being a JUCO guy at the same time uh -huh. now, you know, there's guys that uh, have a negative mindset towards playing junior college baseball. What would you say to that person? To that, flip it 180, I think it's a total uh, game changer. I think it builds a little. You know, the JUCO bandit term is out there, and I love that one because I think it's true. I think it builds a little bit of. Uh, grit inside you because you just got to do shit on your own i mean and some of these guys that in high school they work and work and then they go to big d1 schools and then never had to do anything on their own before just everything's handed to them and, i mean it's not the same case for everyone but um i think juco just brings a different aspect to the game you got to find it yourself whatever that may be um, i think that's crucial in baseball i think and again we try to highlight it every time we have guys that play juco you can still get where you want to get. No doubt. You guys are knocking on the door. of. We have six. Six, six. Division One commits out of one junior college. And Reedley had a you know, a 15th, 16th round draft pick and other guys that are going to move on. It can happen. No doubt. There's, on, a, there's a lot of Division One schools out there. A lot. The people don't even know about. And so that's why you say, talks about go, go research. Go research. 
you want to play Division One baseball, there's more than the Power Five schools. Yeah, you exactly. Know, the Mountain West, the Big West. Well, on the WAC. The WAC. WAC's there's the Southland Conference, the Summit League. There's these conference. The the there's another. I mean, there's so many conferences that you don't even. You're like, that's a Division One conference. Yep. Yeah. Go look who they play too in preseason. Like mm-hmm. like Cole Brinsfield's going mm-hmm. to Central Arkansas. People are like Central Arkansas. Uh, yeah, they went to Vandy, Arkansas, Ole Miss. I mean, go look at their preseason schedule. They, why would you not want to go there? And that's a guy that's going to probably go play right away. You know, he's not going to go sit, and you know, and that's what the JUCO does. Yeah. Hey, until you until you're somewhere, zip it, zip your shit up. Don't knock Central Arkansas if you're not on a JUCO radar. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just shut the fuck up. Yeah, and that's another thing. I mean. Through this process, too, I noticed, I mean, all the coaches that called me, they're like, you know, we love JUCO guys. And you hear this a lot. You hear it from other people. You know, we love JUCO guys. But to actually go through the process as a JUCO guy and hear the way that these schools talk about them, and they just they just like them because they know that they're hopefully ready to just come in and play right away. Um, and, you know, I think that's a plus. It gets you ready. It's, it's not such a total change of speed, but it's just a – good enough change to get you geared up for that next level i think it's a 100 percent agree with that and i think playing juco you find who really loves it yeah you know what i mean like you went through that you went still want to get here yes and especially it's harder going to the top and then getting shoved to the bottom (laughs) to have to work to get back to the top you know And, and i'm sure you have a newfound love for the game of baseball and uh the, the grind that it takes to get where you want to go. Um, and that's what these mid-major schools, they, they want that. They want the JUCO player. I went to a, a mid-major that had 12 California JUCO guys on it. Yeah. We had, they had to get junior college players yeah, and Rob to compete. Said it. He, that was. Yeah. And Oklahoma state still likes them. They were on him too. Um, but the draft, you know, didn't work out or whatever, but you know, Bakersfield's his fit, but I'm just saying, they don't understand how many Division One schools out there like junior college players. Okay, they might not be powerful. Well, and Shane, schools. I mean, Shane has got opportunities to play at some NAIA schools. Yeah, and yeah. Go play. Go play. If somebody wants you to come play, and they're going to take care of you to come play. Yeah, one hundred percent. But if that's not where you want to go from the sure, beginning, I get that. I'm then just, ju- you need to go to junior college. Right. Yeah. Right. And in and it, like you've always said this, and in two years, that NAIA is still going to be there. That D two is still going to be there. And at that point, you know, you go make that commitment and if you want to continue to play. Yeah. You know, with Bakersfield, I think the difference, you know, I would say in years past, they probably relied maybe more on some JUCO guys. Mm -hmm. I think being in the Big West, they're going to start seeing more of that high school kid commit to them. You know, it, the recruiting for Bakersfield is going to be. In, I'm going to be interested to see where that program got in four or five years. I think they're, I think they're 50, 50 though. After talking, having I know you've had conversations with them, but I've had long conversations uh, with their coaching staff, and they still love JUCO guys because they still have to compete at that high level. Right. No. They don't have. The I'm saying program. it's not going to be as hard for them no, maybe no. to go. A, they can recruit get a good high school, a solid high school yeah, player, 100%. being in the Big West and competing in that conference they every year. But unlike, looked. right? But exactly. unlike, but unlike the Oregon and the, they don't have time to invest in that high school senior, that freshman, to have him get ready to play. They have to compete now. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's why they do like the junior college guys. And yeah, they'll they'll take high school kids too. I'm not saying they won't. But, but a team like that, they need to compete now. Oregon and Vanderbilt, they can still compete with the freshmen sitting on the bench and, you know, having the time to, you know, make them. Well, they might they be want. in a situation where Corbin wakes up. He's like, oh, yeah, this, these, these 10 kids committed today. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, you know, you may not even know who they are. Exactly. Like, for example, the kid we played from Sac City last year, COVID year. Boatman? Shortstop. Oh. No, not Boatman, but, he, yeah, he just went. <laughs> um but the shortstop, I forget his name. He's start. He was starting at shortstop at U of A in the College World Series. It's just like JUCO guy right there, out of high school, pretty sure. And it's just that 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 should be, you know. A, he looked like he was ten. <laughs> kid. Yeah. Uh, he's a sol- <clears throat> solid player. I mean, it just that should be a light in every you know kid's head that we're talking about. You know, JUCO's a solid route. They call these good JUCOs and they say, "What do you got for me?" D one schools. You know, do you think that you being you know, you went through the travel ball and all that. Do you think that sometimes parents 
wouldn't be satisfied with that because of the time and money they put into travel ball and hitting coaches and pitching coaches and like they want a scholarship they want money that they invested so much money they want something back for their kids and juco just might not be that yeah i could totally see that <clears throat> i think that might be something tough but that could be a cultural change in the next couple of years hopefully like okay from you know sophomore year recognizing that juco might be a good fit like as a sophomore in high school you're recognizing that okay yeah let's go with this juco route instead almost tuning your mindset instead of tuning it to the rankings and the right you know because right. that's where it starts get your Freshman, focus get your off focus that. on maybe and like, then can hey, i play there and, yes yeah, can i play there first and sign with the juco and then maybe you know or whatever no can, we don't sign our would it, whatever juco. That's bullshit. Don't do that. Just Whatever. think in your head. I signed later. That. Okay, don't say no, it. Yeah, don't say it. Exactly. We don't commit or I sign with I didn't, you. I didn't say we're putting it not in there. California. Yeah. Not in California. <laughs> so, but but go say hey, I'm going to that JUCO, and then okay, if something late in your senior year pops up, and you have opportunity, you want to take it, then take it. But like, I think that could be a good cultural change. I mean, for kids, uh, you know, younger today in baseball. Because there's great JUCO programs out there littered across California and littered across the U.S., and they send guys out every single year. And, yeah, I mean, I just think it's total, total slept-on place and experience, too. Just, I mean, like we are talking about. Some guys might benefit, benefit for, more from it. Yeah. I'm like, would, would you yeah. consider you – do you think you did? I did, 100%. I did. I, I mean, I didn't have any bites out of, out of high school for – Four year plus I didn't have the grades. I knew I was going to junior college, but I mean I went in, I wasn't starting. I was almost redshirted. So I went in and having to be like, Oh geez, I need to work hard. Mm -hmm. I had the the freaking player of the year in front of me. I gotta beat out and you know. Um so that made me have to work harder to get to where I was. And I if I went somewhere else and I might have just fizzled out, you know, at a four year got my education cool. You know, I didn't want just an education. I wanted to freaking play in the big yeah. leagues. Yeah. You know, now, I think the one thing we can all agree on that we learned today is that rankings don't matter. Don't matter. Your player ranking oh, from PBR, no disrespect to PBR, it doesn't matter. Or perfect game, it doesn't matter. What about this? Did you see that kid they were saying ran a five? Okay, well, I saw 60. The, Did you see the video? I timed it. Well, it was a 6-2. Which is still unreal. Somebody posted it. That was three, like it was five, three nine, tenths, no. five, five nine six. Three tenths faster than the world record. Yes, and I timed it on my phone though. I wasn't yeah. there, but I got a six two. So give or take. Who was the Who the was video. the organization that posted? I think that? it was Perfect, Perfect Game. Game. It was at the It was at the Jupiter or the Rays the, deal. The one, yeah, yeah, Tropicana. The, the Tropicana, yeah. Yeah, but they're saying it was like point six seconds better than the world record from nineteen seventy eight. I saw that, and I was just. like, <laughs> What about There's when you no see way. the guys that are like one seven five to seven? Yeah, you're a catcher. Yeah, well, you can see. I mean, every it, the, your body's already lined up to second base before you catch the ball. And then, I mean, but there there's some guys that have some hoses out there. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think my pop, my best pop at a perfect game event was like a one nine seven or something like that. I was just, so it's like these guys are. I was are, just like whatever. They're you hitting know? the start button at, at release point, not at receive. Are they? I don't know. I don't know either. There's no way. There's no way these guys are these. Sophomores in high schools have better arms than Real Muto and oh, Yadi no and those guys, you know. And I'm not saying that kid's not fast. I timed it as six two. That's still really fast. I don't know about five. Well, see, like my my buddy who ran at that. We went to the Fort Myers deal, perfect game national deal, and he he ran like a six three something, which was the second fastest time there. And I mean that was in it insane in and of itself. I mean, that was like the fastest I've ever seen. So to have the world record. So then to see that, I was. <laughs> No way. I know yeah. what that is. Like. Underwood would say, go kick rocks. <laughs> yeah, it's just that. But that's. But now you're just feeding it more. You're just feeding. Yeah, you want more money. You want. You come here, you win, be at the world well, record happened? holder. Yeah, hey, so, see. again, why I said this at the beginning, what happened? Everybody clicked on that shit. We all clicked on oh, it. Oh, yeah. Well, so I clicked we, on it to click on it. I'm say like, some outlandish, you say some outlandish shit to get people to click on it. Yeah. I just thought it was funny. There was a bunch of Division One baseball coaches tweeting out, yeah. blowing it up. Yeah, there's even no way. Bates all was on it, and it was. It was I funny. loved it. I thought that was the best. Yeah, blow these guys up. Yeah, like I think the Penn State coach came out hot, and he was just like, "There's I no think way." Murphy, Pat Murphy was there. He's a, <laughs> the he's old, the old Padres, Rays, yeah, Padres, yeah, now. yeah. It was funny. 
Yeah, that that stuff's got to stop, man. This is like it's the same people you're paying these guys to. Well, who would like who posts that? They didn't. The guy that tweeted that didn't think for two seconds. Like that's a realistic number for a 16 year old kid to run this. There's nothing wrong with a six two that I got. That's still freaking super fast. Unreal. I think the big league average is a six eight. Like they didn't cross their mind once that have this is completely full of shit. Let's go ahead and do this. Yeah. No, because all of us dumbasses clicked on it. And we're talking about it. That's what I was saying. <laughs> That's the problem. We need their marketing Click people. Bait. We, need, we need to do more of that, I guess. I don't know. All right, we'll just start saying this episode is two <laughs> seconds long. You need to click on it and subscribe. Yeah, it's, yeah no, I mean, uh, yeah, whatever. Have Mike Trout on this episode. Yeah, Mike Trout <laughs> showing up next week. You guys want to tune in. We'll have his interview from like intentional talk. Dale Earnhardt Jr. going to be a uh, part of the podcast. Uh, <laughs> we'll just bring the cardboard cutout over. So you can sit good. there. Yeah. I'm no, yeah, I think that's, you know, that's what, again, I, I love that it, you've got to see all of it, you know, and the highs and lows of all of it. Yeah, no, I think it's been a cool experience going from kind of, you know, like a ranked recruiter or whatever to high school and then bouncing back and getting a look at the other side of it. And uh, like I said, I loved the the JUCO side of it. Um, yeah, just just as much, if not more, than the, you know, the D1 life or whatever. Um, but I think it's just a cool, cool process. Um, yeah, I'm blessed enough to be able to go through that twice and – um, you know, have have opportunity somewhere. So I'm just glad it all worked out, and I find found uh, found the spot in, in Bakersfield. Man, uh, congratulations, man! I'm Thank happy you. for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Chad's had nothing but really, really good things to say about you, and honestly, all the kids at City. He, he's he loves where he's at, so I'm happy for him. Uh, and again, man, good luck to you going forward. Thank you. Definitely following Bakersfield and some of the City guys there, and as as other schools they go to. Um, so yeah, we'll be on a lookout. Yeah, uh, I'll be keep me updated. Yes, sir. Always. Yeah, no, this is uh, this has been fun. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, it's been man, a blast. Of course, talking, anytime. Talking baseball and whatnot. Any- Crazy rankings. Yeah, anytime, anytime. Tell your friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I've heard the city guys, there's a lot of city guys that actually listen or watch. So yeah, there are. That's, that's what I've heard. There's chatter in the dugout. Good. They need yeah. to be on their phones, hit and subscribe. <laughs> Damn it. Tell them. Come on. Rams. Yeah. Ram uh, up. Fire me up, Rams. Come yeah. on. Ram up. There you go. Uh, no, thank you again, bud. Yeah. And uh, that was another episode. 119. James Bell. Hit or die podcast. Hit or die. <laughs>